How to make fake rocks from styrofoam. Fake rocks from styrofoam. Well, here's my claim. The fake rock that I'm going to make from styrofoam, I don't think there's a better looking, more realistic fake rock made out of styrofoam out there. There's probably a whole bunch of different ways that you could approach a project like this. The way that I'm going to do it is going to give you what I believe to be the highest quality finished product. I guess now you got to stick around because you got to see what that looks like. Let's get started. And we're done. Just kidding, we're not done yet. <laughs> Would be a very short video. So what I have here is a giant hunk of styrofoam. Maybe you have something different. Maybe you have sheets of styrofoam. That's pretty common. Um, especially because if you had to buy something like this, it'd be pretty expensive. But styrofoam is hard to get rid of, typically speaking, and you pay a lot to dispose of it. So a lot of times you can find styrofoam that's left over. Let's say there was a large construction project. There might be some styrofoam that was used. A half a sheet of this super thick styrofoam to them is totally useless. It's garbage. It's in the way they got to pay to get rid of it. If you can take some of that off their hands, they might pay you to do it. So it's out there. If you go looking for it, you can find styrofoam. So I'm starting with a pretty big piece and you could probably do the same if you go looking for it. But even if you had thinner pieces, one of the things that I used or what I started with and I used all the time was hot tub covers because I've, a, I've worked in the pool and spa industry forever. So I had a lot of exposure to these hot tub covers and what are we going to do with them? You got to cut them up and throw them away. I started saving this foam, which looks a lot like what you see here, except it's about four, four or five inches thick commonly. And I would take them and I would pin those layers together at first using foam adhesive. They make a product just for it. It goes in a silicone gun, put it on, squish it together, leave it overnight. But I didn't like that leave it overnight business because I'm kind of sculpting with this and I want it to be something I put in place and it's ready immediately. So I started experimenting with making dowels out of wire and pins, common nails, using screws, things like this are all different ways that you can take, you know, just a sheet of thinner styrofoam and attach them all together to get you to where I'm starting here, which is a big old block of styrofoam. So it kind of looks like a rock already. I could just call it a day here, maybe put a paint job on it. I think I've seen people do that. They'll just take styrofoam, I've seen this technique technique used. They'll use primer from PVC solvent welding, like the stuff you'd take or that you'd use to clean and prepare a PVC pipe to get ready to solvent weld it into a fitting. The primer of that contains MEK, methyl ethyl ketone, and it's terrible stuff. It's like you open a can of it and it's like, what smells awful, really bad for you. Uh, definitely like burns skin and stuff like that. It's awful. And when you touch styrofoam with this stuff, it just, the stuff, it's kind of magical looking, right? Like the styrofoam just disappears. And I, mean, I don't know, I think maybe it's how you make napalm or something like that, like a melting styrofoam, but that's what it looks like. It's just the primer eats the styrofoam. So if you were to take this bottle of primer and this very caustic or awful chemical and just do one of these things, you're going to get this really pockmarked surface effect, which essentially looks like some kind of rock. So I have seen that done. That's not what I'm going to be doing. I don't like how it looks. I think my rock is going to look better. I don't like the idea of using that product in that way, because I think that melting styrofoam with chemicals on my workbench probably isn't the thing I want to be doing. I don't know. Maybe, maybe it is, but I'm not going to do that. I'm going to do something better than that. So I have this big piece of foam. I'm going to make a large rock. As you can tell, it's probably, you probably figured that out by this point and it's going to be heavy, right? It's not going to be like so lightweight that it's blowing over in a windstorm. 
But I'll definitely be able to, when I'm finished here, just grab this guy and pick it up and transport it out to the garden or wherever it is I want this thing to go. And it will be strong enough to sit on. I mean, I wouldn't want to, like, I could probably stand on it. In fact, I'm confident I could stand on it without breaking it. But I wouldn't want to be jumping up and down on it. You know, like, if I make some rocks like this, which I've done before, and I give them to people, and then they have, you know, kids, and the kid is, like, jumping up and down right on, you can break it. You can definitely break it like that. They don't, they don't handle that impact resistance very well. And, you know, there's a lot of dynamic force in something jumping up and down, or somebody jumping up and down, and as a result, you can damage it like that. But otherwise, what I'm making here is lightweight enough to pick it up and move it, even though it's pretty large like this, but should withstand regular uh, regular use, if you can avoid abuse of the piece, likely it's going to last. You can leave it outside, you can even expose it to freezing conditions, and it's not going to damage it, so long as you maintain the finished layer. Jumping ahead, the finished layer is a concrete sealer, but it's important that you know that, because I just said that you could expose it to freeze damage, but you need, do need to, just like with any concrete application, you should regularly upkeep the sealer to minimize the water permeation because that water permeation is what gets you. The water permeates into the surface. It's sitting there in the surface as it freezes out. That water expands, takes up more space, and that surface layer spalls or you get these little concrete explosions and divots on the surface. And that's, that's no good at all. We definitely don't want that. So moving along here, what we're going to do is I could, you're thinking, just cover it with concrete. You could, but fat chance climbing that, <laughs> you know, that vertical climb there without some sort of armature or steel with which to facilitate this. The steel also provides additional benefit as it's providing tensile strength to the finished product. Concrete has a very high compressive strength and a very low tensile strength. So adding steel is going to enable me to do something like climb a vertical surface like this, but it's also going to increase the tensile strength of the concrete. It might not prevent con the concrete from cracking because that's not really how steel works. It would and could still crack, but there won't be any more movement. You might not even see the crack at all oftentimes, but that's what we're going to do is we're going to add some steel. It's going to increase the strength and it's going to facilitate climbing up the sides of this rock made from styrofoam that we're going to make. Now before I jump in there, which I'm going to do in just one second, I want to say that working with some of these materials are dangerous and you should definitely take caution. The next stage in particular is using a product called Stucco Lath or Diamond Mesh, or probably a couple of different names that it goes by. But this stuff is really unforgiving in terms of you're going to have to cut it and shape it and it's got a memory to it and it's flopping around and making noise and probably banging into my microphone and knocking things over. But what you don't want it to do is you don't want it to cut you because it's really, really sharp. And if you work with lath a lot, you almost expect like at some point you're probably going to get cut. It does happen. So be extra, extra careful if you decide that you want to make something like this for yourself. If you can kind of master this whole process of using this stucco lath and styrofoam, you open up a lot of doors in terms of creating things with concrete that you can start to make for yourself. But let's get back on track here with this fake rock made from styrofoam. I'm going to go gear up, grab that stucco lath diamond mesh, and we'll get started. So again, safety first when working with this. Right now, this is gonna be the top of the rock, but for now, we're gonna lay it down. Okay, two things. One, if it looks awkward, it's because I don't normally do this filming it in front of a camera. I would do it on a different workbench that's I can have access on all sides. But this is where my filming studio is. So we're going to roll with it. It might look a little awkward. Two, we're going to take this lath and we're going to wrap it entirely around this rock. But here's the important part. So you're looking at what will be the underside of this rock, this fake rock made from foam. 
So I don't want this steel to extend past here because then that steel would be exposed in the finished product. You could have like a sharp edge. So I don't want this steel to be too far because the concrete needs the steel there to climb. So you have to be careful with the very first placement here when you're putting the stucco lath onto the foam. I wanna be, you know, maybe about one inch up from the bottom. You know, pretty close, pretty close to how I have it there. Just about there. Okay, so now what? So from here, I want to use roofing nails and I'm going to go get them or at least a small handful thereof of these roofing nails. That's it. Like I mean, you need more than one, but you get the idea. So at first here, I'm not gonna use too many because as I rotate this piece and I add more and more, this stuff's all gonna move around and even if I add a whole bunch right now, they're all gonna become loose during that process. You can't just press them back into the same hole because now it's a little bit loosey-goosey. You would have to take it out and move it over to an adjacent hole and push it in to get the same purchase that I get from the original press of the roofing nail into the foam. The amount of purchase that you get will depend on the density of the styrofoam that you're working with. I mean, styrofoam comes in all kinds of different densities. This one is pretty much perfect, I can tell from working with it, but sometimes it could be so hard you can barely even press the nail into it. That's a little bit too hard for me, that's kind of hard work, but that's better than when it's so soft you could just press the roofing nail right in or you could even press a four inch common nail all the way in and it just falls right out because it's such a low density foam so you're looking for something in that mid-range i wish i could give you more information on how many pounds density that is i don't know because this is all you know used or scavenged or recycled styrofoam as i mentioned earlier so i don't get the benefit of knowing that i could only make an estimation for you which is to say like a couple of pounds, hey, maybe somebody who knows something about measuring density of, of foam could comment. That'd be great. We'd be very lucky if somebody could comment on that and we can all learn a little bit more. I shouldn't talk while I'm moving this because it sounds like it's going to make a lot of noise. Anyway, let's keep moving here. So when I want to turn a corner like this, you just kind of grab the mesh and bend it over. Obviously I'm wearing gloves and you're being careful. But that's the process. See what I mean? How I was saying before, how it's gonna pull it out? No worries, we were expecting that. Move it over and let's keep rolling. The more we get attached, the more it starts to stay in place. It's a real challenge at first to get it started, especially when you're filming videos. But we'll get there. See right here, this is what I was talking about. In the process of doing this, my lath is now coming down and it's extending past the bottom, the bottom. And that's something I don't want. So take a minute, readjust it, make a crinkle or a wrinkle over here, do something so that you can get that back up and about one inch from the bottom. We've reached the end, we need to make a cut. I mean, I could keep overlapping, but I'm, money doesn't grow on trees, so I'm gonna trim it up here. Cutting this is when you would normally get cut, or very often that's when you can get cut. So you have to be careful when you're cutting lath. And the right tool for the job helps a lot. Straight cut tin snips, the yellow ones. That's the ones you're going for. We'll go ahead and get started here. So I started at the bottom. Basically, I only have to reach just to the bottom here. 
but I want at least what six inches of overlap something like that so I'm gonna go ahead and cut it six inches longer okay now we can keep going we can get it wrapped all the way around once and now when we start putting these pins in they'll start staying in place Again, being mindful the whole time, this thing is just dying to cut you, so don't let it. So something I just did here is I kind of will grab and I will put it under tension. I don't want to just like reef on it or crank it, but I don't want to leave it loose. I want to be able to have it such that this last will end up being fairly tight and secure. If you were to like grab it with needle nose pliers and move it, it's not going to be loose and banging around. That would result in the whole piece physically moving. So you'll see what I mean more if you stay tuned and I hope you do. We'll keep rolling along here. I wanted it to fit tighter here, so instead of cutting it, which is annoying, I just made a fold in the lath and then continued up. No problem at all. You can do that, in fact, a whole bunch. You wouldn't want it to be too thick, so you wouldn't want to have like three, four, five layers folded, but one fold, no problem at all. We got another one here. Let's do the samesies. Now we're ready for the top. I could cut off most of this, three quarters of it. I could cut off, fold one piece over it. That's all we really need. I don't really want to cut it. Again, I don't really enjoy doing that. Plus, I don't mind the top being extra strong. The reason why the, the top will be exposed to the most potential for damage, somebody jumping up and down on it causes damage, uh, potential for you know freezing to cause problems. The thicker, that this horizontal spot is the stronger it will be so i could cut away most of this lath or i could leave it all or almost all of it and try to fold it in what what am i going to go for an inch inch and a quarter no more than inch and a half that's getting pretty thick pretty extra strong for no reason and i don't want to add a ton of weight at the top because then i'm going to make it top heavy i don't have a ton of concrete at the bottom because this is going to be a relatively thin skin of concrete all around. Like, I mean, we're probably gonna have a half inch everywhere, we're probably gonna have an inch or more in some places, but we're going for less because this is already really strong. Like if I were to just bend this all over and then sit on it, it's gonna work. It's not gonna break, it's not gonna fall over. It's pretty stable before we even add concrete onto it. So as you can imagine, any thickness of concrete that we add to the whole thing at this point, this thing is pretty darn strong. Anyway, let's keep going here. We're gonna try to fold in the top layers and then we can get started talking about concrete. I'll be right back. I'm back and I brought with me some four inch long nails because those short roofing nails aren't gonna cut it. Ooh. 
we could proceed like this, but there's a few things that we could do to improve our situation. I love this. There's lots of steel up top. It's going to be super strong, but there's maybe a little bit too much steel, or at least it's too thick right now. I have two options. I could go and get a mallet or a hammer and you could just bash it. You just smack away, take out all your frustrations on it. It's totally fine. You're not going to hurt it. It's not going to make it inferior in any way as a result. The only reason I'm not doing it is because it's loud and it's like four in the morning while I'm filming this and I have respect for my neighbors and I don't want to make a ton of unnecessary noise. So instead of bashing away, I'm going to try to just very carefully do this and at most, you know what, let's try this. This should be pretty quiet. It's working. We'll call that the old steamroller technique because she's flat as a pancake now. Let's proceed. We're pretty far along here, like further along than you think. And at this point, if I had a bunch of mortar mixed up ready to rock, I could dump it on, be going, I could be done and out of here in under an hour for sure. Might take you a little longer the first time that you make one of these. Don't rush it. At this stage, now that I have the lath on all the way around, go around, burn some extra roofing nails, and really get it to be nice and tight. I want to give you a good example here. I guess I'll give you this one. It's not bad. So let's take a look. We're looking at this nail in particular. Do you see how it's not really tight there? We've got this. When I go to press the mortar in with my trowel, that movement in the steel is going to potentially cause problems, especially on the, you know, the tall vertical climbs like this. It's not critical that it's absolutely tight everywhere, but you want to do what you can. These roofing nails aren't that expensive. Just use them, a, you know, a bunch extra and try to get this lap nice and tight all the way around before we start the concrete stage. We're ready for the next stage.